privileged, of course, to be sitting here. This is the first time that I have seen the new little cubs and how adorable are they. We're lucky because when we just got here, they were lying in the long grass and it's like they were already learning the ropes. And they've decided, of course, to come out and have a suckle. They are so sweet and so tiny. It is really, really nice to see little lion cubs again. Well, you can see straight away which one has got a dominant personality as it bosses its siblings around and bulldozes them to try and find, well, the teat with all the milk. And that's what these little ones will do. This is really, really sweet, isn't it? Listen to the sounds that they're making. And typical. <laughs> as soon as I stop talking, all the little ones stop making a noise. They've obviously found a spot. They've got their eyes closed now. They're going to drink their fill and then they will probably go and have a siesta somewhere. But it is nice and cool, so hopefully we'll be able to spend a bit of time with them today. Um, I'm glad we managed to get here earlier before the guards have got out because it is going to be very, very busy this afternoon, you can imagine, with these little ones. They will be, well, a highlight, and I'm sure all the guests in the various lodges are absolutely itching uh, to see these beautiful little cubs. Now, remember, this is indeed a live safari, so if you'd like to ask any questions, you can hashtag Safari Live with your questions on Twitter. I think this is the first time in a couple of months that I've actually seen the Styx Pride, or the entire Styx Pride, all three females, back together again. We can just see two of them at the moment. But the third one is around the corner with one of the Birminghams. Just keeping an eye on what I think Tristan said was a waterbuck carcass this morning. But it is very quiet. They're definitely not feeding at the moment. And one of the older cubs has got a very full belly. So I'm sure that this little one had been hanging around the carcass for most of the afternoon and probably the morning. And look at it. Big pants. <laughs> I think, regretting uh, that it ate so much. That's always the case, isn't it? You think that you, you have space for dessert, and then often when you have dessert, that's not the case at all. You should have stopped at your starter. And I think lions are good examples of that. Although, if you have an appetite like Hosanna, who is a young male leopard, um, in, just in case you're unsure of all these names, um, he has got a ferocious appetite as well. And I think he'll have a ferocious appetite for his entire life. And so will these little lions. But let's, uh, hopefully we'll see them all grow up, won't we? That'll be nice. <clears throat> now, obviously something that unfortunately we always have to chat about with the Styx Pride is the fact that the lionesses do have a case of mange. So they're looking quite healthy. Mm. They look much better than the last time that I saw them. And uh, love dogs, you were actually wondering if mange would still be a problem. It would only be a problem if one of the lions in the pride still has mange. And like I said, the last time I saw one of the lionesses with the two older cubs, she didn't look great. She still looked very patchy. But I think with all the abundance of healthy animals around that they can feed on, I think it will definitely help their immune system. So let's hope that the lionesses can pull through and beat the mange. And then if they do that, that just gives the cubs a better chance of survival too and mange in, in animals normally only comes through when they're not particularly healthy so when they have a dip in their immune system it's quite common to pick up something like mage and for these little cubs it is very difficult to fight something like that when you haven't even well probably started eating meat just yet i'm sure they're having a couple of nibbles but you can see they're still quite happy and relying on mom's milk so once they start getting exposed to all sorts of different bacteria, they'll start building up a resilience. But that, of course, only comes in when they're a little bit older. So it is tough for these cubs. But you must remember, and we say this over and over, but nature is cruel. Only the fittest and the strongest will survive and make it through to adulthood. And the success rate of young predators is unfortunately not very high, especially to make it to adulthood. So you know what the thing is about nature is you've just got to enjoy what we've got while we've got it and make the most of it and remember all the good times and not dwell 
on the negatives. I think that's an important sort of philosophy to have in life, really, is just keep moving forward. There's always going to be obstacles and challenges, but if you keep positive, and I'm sure that's what these lions do, they don't want to see their cubs go either. They want to be successful, and that is their role in life, really, is to breed and pass on their genes and ensure that their little ones survive. Now, Carolyn, as we look at these little ones feasting, uh, you're wondering how long does mom suckle them for? Well, this is always a funny story, Carolyn. It's actually something really in it's enjoyable to watch as we go on. Because these cubs are relatively young. I think they're only about, well, how old are they now? About, f no, they're not even four months. Four months, I think the other ones are four months. Louise, do we know how old these cubs are? About two months, something around there. Weren't they born at the end of February? Yes, they were. February, March, April, yes. Three months? I think that might be a, three months. I think might be a little bit old because if I'm not mistaken, I think I have in my diary, and I'll check it now. When we went to the rangers meeting, and they'd said that the lion cubs were born. It was after the 20th of February. Should we have a look? Let's get the blue book out and uh, note because I don't have it here because I was making notes this afternoon, so it's sitting in my room. Um, so yes, yeah, so I remember the last rangers meeting that I attended with with Steph, and we were actually discussing. Um, the dates and I can't quite remember but I have written it down but I think they said I think it was the 28th of February I don't know why I'm remembering that date but that date seems to be popping into my head so they're actually a little bit younger than that they're not quite even two months old then well maybe maybe just two months because mom would have also uh, probably tucked them away and we might have only picked up on them on a few days later even a week later before we realized that that lioness even had any cubs now remember um of course i can just i'm just listening to the radio chat and i want to keep you all up to date uh, there are a lot of guides that do sound like they're coming to this area so i'll try and get hold of them again um, and let them know that we are here i did try earlier but it didn't get a response so what might happen is we might not be able to sit here for too long but we'll see how long we can manage and then we can always try and be put onto the rotation for this evening the only difficult thing though is we're obviously fighting against the light because this sighting that we're watching at the moment is definitely light sensitive. And because they are so young, um, they will call this a negative sighting uh, once the sun goes down. Sorry, I knocked my hat there. I had a fly buzzing around my nose. Um, so we'll, like I said, we'll try and spend as much as time as we can. But they're fairly flat for the moment. They've had a suckle, they've had something to eat. They're enjoying the cooler weather. And I think digestion is taking place at the moment. But 